Today on DNN, we'll be discussing the upcoming election. So let's, oh, wait, hold on a second. I'm just getting word of an incident at McMaster University. A student has collapsed in the examination hall due to an excessive consumption of energy drinks. As we know, energy drinks are marketed to improve concentration, energy, stamina, athletic performance, and even weight loss. The consumption of energy drinks has become more and more popular. In fact, we have found reports today that 50% of Ontario students consume energy drinks and as a result, a recent survey showed that one in five of these students have at least one energy drink in a week. We have a reporter, Kunal Sheen, on the scene to provide us with more details. Hi, Kunal. Thank you, Shara. Yes, this is a sad day for students at McMaster University. I have a witness here who can give us an insight on what happened here today. Hello. Hi. Can you give us a quick background on what happened? Yo, it was crazy. This girl just walked in the room with some random beverage and just dropped on the ground. And what beverage was this? Um, I think it was like red, blue, no, 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 it was Maroon Bull. It's like the new thing this, these days. Yes, that's right. Maroon Bull was just identified as a crime scene. Thank you very much, witness. You're welcome. Also, shout out to my boys! No? And now, we would like to share a video recorded by a witness on the scene using their camera phone. Yo, what's going on? Whoa. Is she dead? It's amazing how much of an impact this beverage can have on individuals. More updates to come. Back to you, Shara. Thank you, Kumo. Now to tell us more about the use of energy drinks, we have an expert with us, Dr. Manu, live from St. Joseph's Hospital. Manu? Hey, Shara. Thanks for having me. So, what is in these energy drinks that cause the problem? The main ingredients include high amounts of caffeine, sugar, taurine, and guarana. Some people have the misconception that energy drinks have more caffeine than coffee. However, one cup of coffee contains almost twice the amount of caffeine than an energy drink. What they don't consider is that other harmful ingredients in energy drinks that can act synergistically with the caffeine. So caffeine is known to be a psychoactive drug and acts as a central nervous system stimulator and consuming more than one gram of it can cause acute clinical toxicity. Some of the effects of excess caffeine include stimulation of skeletal muscle, increased blood pressure and insulin sensitivity, as well as increased alertness. In addition, the excessive amounts of sugar also cause an increase in blood pressure and heart rate. Taurine, another main ingredient when combined with caffeine, causes a de decline in heart rate, as well as pressure-induced bradycardia, which essentially means an uh, extremely slow heart rate. That sounds serious. Has there been any research conducted that supports these claims? I'm glad you brought that up. In 2017, my fellow colleague, Volinoskas and Associates, conducted a survey to assess energy consumption patterns of 496 randomly selected college students over a semester. This survey found that 29% of students experienced weekly jolt and crash episodes after consuming these drinks. In another study conducted at McMaster University, researchers took the key ingredients found in major energy drinks and administered them into isolated human neuron cells. What they discovered was that redox homeostasis was disrupted. Normally, reactive oxygen species, or ROS, are produced as a natural byproduct of normal oxygen metabolism. However, high levels of ROS can cause cell damage. The, the body produces antioxidants to combat excessive levels of ROS and thus establish a balance. Now, when we look at this study, we, we see that the ingredients in energy drinks like guarana combined with caffeine and or taurine actually disrupt this balance, once again causing further neuron degeneration via swelling and fragmentation. This highlights the dangers of energy drinks affecting antioxidants ac activity within the body. There's more research being done currently on the effects of these ingredients. Thank you, Manny. Very informative. Thanks for having me. No, well, we just got word that the victim's conscious. Back to our reporter on the scene. Hi, Kumo. What's been happening? Yes, we have the victim, Ikra Said, with us here today. Ikra, how are you feeling? I'm all right. I just have some slight heart palpitations, chest pains, and now that I think about it, I'm a bit nauseous as well. You're clearly not okay. Has this happened before? Nothing like this. In the past, when I've had energy drinks, I usually suffer from anxiety or have trouble sleeping, but this was crazy. Well, we hope you feel better. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. We feel that students are unaware of the ingredients present in energy drinks and the high amounts of caffeine and sugar. A part of the reason is because some energy drinks are classified as dietary supplements by the FDA and therefore do not require FDA pre-approval. This can prove problematic as companies like Maroon Bull can avoid conducting extensive safety testing before marketing their products. Back to you, Shara. Oh, uh, thank you, Kumo. Uh, we recommend that you always check the ingredients carefully before consuming any energy drink and to ask your doctor if you have any questions regarding the ingredients, their effects, 
and to see if they're okay to take with any medication that you might also be consuming. For more information on this topic, check out our YouTube channel and website, demystifyingmedicine.ca. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.